Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the verapamil. How this drug acts in the different types of cardiovascular disorders. What are the side effects and contraindications of verapamil? Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker, which is commonly known as CCB. But normally, we have three types of calcium channel blockers. One group of drugs are going to belong to the category phenylalkylamines. And another group of drugs are benzothiazepines. And third one is the dihydropyridines. Among the phenylalkylamines, one of the calcium channel blockers is the verapamil. And within the benzothiazepines, one of the drugs is the diltiazem. And we have so many types of drugs in the dihydropyridines which are ending with the suffix dipin like the nifedipine, felodipine, amlodipine and so many types of drugs are there. But today in this video, we are going to discuss the verapamil which is belonging to the phenylalkyl amines. So first of all, let us see the structure of verapamil. So this is a large structure of verapamil. And here you can observe this is having a phenyl ring which is attached with an alkyl chain along with an amine group. And here this phenyl group is attached with an alkyl amine side chain. So that's why verapamil is a phenyl alkyl amine. And we can observe one of the function group here. This is a cyanide or it's also called as nitrile. We can start the numbering from this nitrile. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So now this nitrile is attached with a 5 carbon chain. That means it is having a pentanitrile side chain which is attached to the phenyl ring at second position. That's why verapamil is considered as a derivative of valeronitrile. Valeronitrile is a 5 carbon chain with a nitrile group at the first position. So verapamil is a valeronitrile derivative and chemically it also belongs to the phenyl alkyl amines. Now let us see how this verapamil acts as a calcium channel blocker and how it is useful in the various cardiovascular disorders. Verapamil is blocking the L-type calcium channels. Normally we have the different types of calcium channels like the L-type, T-type, P by Q-type and different types. But these L-type calcium channels are mainly present on the two locations. The first important location they are present on the cardiac muscle where they are responsible for the phase 2 depolarization. And they are also present on the smooth muscle where they are responsible for the contraction of the smooth muscle. But here verapamil is selective for inhibition of the L-type calcium channels on the cardiac muscle. So it mainly shows the cardiac actions. By blocking these L-type calcium channels on the cardiac muscle, verapamil can inhibit the SCA node activity, AV node activity, as well as it can also inhibit the coronary arteries resulting in the coronary vasodilatation. But this drug is not having any direct action on the smooth muscle because it is not having significant action on the L-type calcium channels present on the smooth muscle. So what are the actions of the verapamil are mainly related with the action of this drug on L-type calcium channels present on the cardiac muscle. Now let us see how this verapamil acts. Within the cardiac muscle, one of the important ion channels are the voltage-gated sodium channels. These voltage-gated sodium channels are responsible for the phase 0, the rapid depolarization phase. Now when the sodium is going to enter through these sodium channels into the cardiac cells, it produces the depolarization of the cardiac membrane such that the depolarization can be extended up to the T-tubules. When this depolarization wave it reaches to the T-tubules, they will activate the L-type calcium channels. These L-type calcium channels are expressed closely with the intracellular stores of the calcium. So they are expressed nearer to the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is having the rhinodine receptors. Now when the cardiac cells are depolarized by phase 0 rapid depolarization, the calcium channels are opened through which the calcium can enter and it can activate the rhinodine receptors within the sarcoplasmic reticulum which are then activated to release the large amounts of the calcium into the cardiac cells. In this way, a small current of calcium can increase the release of the large amount of the calcium from the internal stores. And as the calcium within the cardiac cells increases, it results in the contraction of the cardiac muscle. In this way, L-type calcium channels are mainly responsible for the cardiac contraction. But here this verapamil is going to block these L-type calcium channels. Thereby verapamil is going to decrease the rate of contraction. It produces a negative chronotropic effect and it also decreases the force of contraction. That means it produces a negative inotropic effect. In this way, verapamil is going to inhibit the cardiac muscle where it is going to decrease both rate as well as force of contraction which results in the decreased cardiac output as well as decrease the cardiac work. Now let us see the pharmacological actions. Verapamil is going to block the L-type calcium channels thereby it is going to decrease the contraction of the cardiac muscle. So one of the important actions is to decrease the heart rate. That's why verapamil can be used in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia as well as atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter where it can reduce the 
rate of contraction of the heart. Similarly, calcium is also responsible for the conduction through the AV node and verapamil is going to decrease the AV conduction, thereby it is going to reduce the supraventricular tachycardia. This is one of the conditions where the impulse are more generated from the atria which are going to be transported to the ventricles through the AV node. So here verapamil can inhibit the supraventricular tachycardia by inhibition of the AV conduction. But nowadays adenosine is one of the drugs which is more preferred in the treatment of uh, supraventricular tachycardia compared with the verapamil. And third important formulas action is the coronary vasodilatation. Even the verapamil is not acting on the systemic blood vessels, still it can act on the coronary blood vessels resulting in the coronary vasodilatation and when the coronary blood supply is going to be improved, it can decrease the angina and verapamil can also decrease the cardiac output by decrease the force of contraction and as the force of contraction decreases, it results in the decrease in the afterload, the pumping pressure. So because of these two actions, verapamil can be used in the treatment of angina as well as in the treatment of essential hypertension. What are the side effects? The important side effects are the headache because verapamil can produce some vasodilatation which may produce some headache and constipation. Verapamil is going to block the calcium channels which are responsible for the contraction of the smooth muscle. Even verapamil is more selected for the cardiac muscle but it can show few of the activities on the other smooth muscles. So verapamil can inhibit the calcium channels within the GA tract thereby it can decrease the GA motility which results in the constipation. And it can also decrease the force of contraction and afterload, thereby it can produce a hypotension, some dizziness in the patients and other side effects like nausea and fatigue can also be observed with the verapamil. And another important side effect is the bradycardia. Because this drug is going to decrease the heart rate, it can produce a bradycardia and dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. And another important side effect is the flushing, the vasodilatory response because of the decrease in the blood pressure. And another important side effect of verapamil is the increase in the liver enzymes. Verapamil can elevate the liver enzymes which should be carefully observed when this drug is used for a prolonged period. And if you have the hypersensitive reactions like the skin rashes can also be observed with the verapamil. What are the contraindications? Verapamil is acting as an anti-arrhythmic agent but it is also used in the treatment of hypertension because it is going to produce a hypotension as one of the important effect. So one of the important contraindications is the severe hypotension. In the patients who are having the severe hypotension, otherwise the patients having the cardiogenic shock where the pumping pressure of the heart is going to be reduced. In such conditions, the verapamil is going to be contraindicated where it can further deteriorate these conditions by reducing the blood pressure and reducing the force of contraction. And particularly when the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 mm of Hg, the verapamil is contraindicated. Similarly, the second or third degree heart block. Heart block is a condition because of the blocking of atrioventricular conduction and we know that verapamil is going to decrease the AV conduction and in the patients who are in the second or third degree heart block, the verapamil can further decrease the AV conduction which may impair the ventricular functionality leading to the death of the patient. That's why in these conditions, again the verapamil is contraindicated. Next is the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. This Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is one type of re-entry type of arrhythmia. In the re-entry type of arrhythmia, we have to use the drugs which are going to increase the action potential duration. But here verapamil is going to block the calcium channels, thereby it reduce the action potential duration, which may increase the re-entry type of arrhythmia resulting in the increased Wolf-Parkinson syndrome. That's why the patients who are having these circulatory disorders like the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or re-entry type of arrhythmias, Verapamil is strictly contraindicated. And another contraindication is the severe congestive to heart failure. Even the verapamil is going to produce a negative inotropic effect, that means it decreases the force of contraction. But in the severe congestive to heart failure, verapamil can decrease the force of contraction, thereby it can decrease the cardiac output. In such conditions, again, the verapamil is contraindicated. What are the drug interactions? The important drug interaction is observed with the desoxin. Desoxin is a cardiotonic which increases the force of contraction and verapamil is one of the drugs which decrease the force of contraction. But here the drug interaction is not observed at this step. But desoxin is going to be excreted through the renal system and verapamil can decrease the excretion of the desoxin by inhibition of the P-glycoprotein pump. So when the verapamil is given along with the desoxin, desoxin is not going to be excreted through the renal system. 
which increase the levels of digoxin within the plasma resulting in the digoxin talk that's why whenever the verapamil is given along with the digoxin the dose of the digoxin should be reduced in order to prevent the toxicity similarly prazosin prazosin is an alpha 1 blocker and we can also have other types of alpha 1 blockers like the doxazosin terazosin all these are the direct vasodilators which produce a hypotension by blocking the alpha 1 receptors and when these alpha 1 blockers are given along with the verapamil they can produce a severe hypotension so again precaution should be taken whenever these alpha 1 blockers are combined with the verapamil how it is given verapamil is given as a tablet or injection form it is available at the different doses as a tablet around 40 80 and 120 mg and the dose of the verapamil is individualized based on the patient conditions as well as the clinical indication for example when it is given for angina the usual dose is around 80 to 120 mg 3 times daily and for arrhythmias the dose may be variable based on the type of arrhythmia and commonly it is observed at a dose of uh, 240 to 320 mg per day in divided doses even for treatment of hypertension we can use dose at 80 mg 3 times daily but again these doses are not fixed and they are individualized based on the conditions of the patient so that's about the verapamil verapamil is a l type calcium channel blocker which is on the high selectivity towards the cardiac muscle thereby it reduce the rate of contraction as well as force of contraction it decrease the av conduction atrioventricular conduction as well as it decrease the afterload by decreasing the cardiac output by all of these pharmacological actions verapamil can be used in the treatment of angina arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia atrial fibrillation atrial flutter and it can also be used to treat the supraventricular tachycardia where this drug is going to decrease the av conduction since this drug is going to reduce the blood pressure it can also be used in the treatment of hypertension and as an off label purpose verapamil can also be used as a prophylactic in case of migraine and this drug mainly produces few other side effects like the headache constipation dizziness hypotension and it can also produce few of the hypersensitivity action like the skin rashes this drug may elevate the liver enzymes which should be monitored when this drug is used for a prolonged period and this drug is strictly contraindicated in the severe congestive heart failure similarly reentry type of arrhythmias like wolf parkinson white syndrome as well as in case of severe hypotension cardiogenic shock in all these conditions verapamil is contraindicated and this drug should be carefully given with the other vasodilators like the alpha 1 blockers so that's about the verapamil hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video